How to fit reversing gear to a Stuart 5A steam engine. This is part 2. Fitting the reversing gear components to the engine and adjusting the slide valve. The first thing to do is to remove the existing eccentric, clean it up and refit it. The bolts that hold it in place are also a little bit rusty so I'm going to clean those up as well. At some time in the past, whoever built this engine, or whoever worked on it, made these special long nuts and bolts to hold the eccentric strap to the eccentric sheave. Personally, I'm not thrilled with these, but I'm going to reuse them because they are part of the original engine. They really don't look too bad. The engineering standard on this engine is pretty good. And you can see this by the eccentric sheaves. These are not two separate eccentric sheaves. Both of them have been machined as one unit. First of all, I'm going to clean up the eccentric straps, and I'm using some 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper, and the liquid I'm using as a lubricant is my Liquid of the Month WD-40, mainly because I've run out of my supply of 3-in-1 oil. The WD-40 though works very well indeed. Once I cleaned up the eccentric strap parts, I turned my attention to the eccentric rods. And then I fitted part A to part B using some bolts. These are a pair of 4BA bolts and should hold the parts together securely. By using my polishing spindle, I also cleaned up the long, specially made bolts that hold the two halves of the eccentric strap together. A quick tip, when bolting parts together, particularly soft pieces of metal, using fastenings that are made of hard pieces of metal, do not ever over tighten them. If you do over tighten them, then the softer pieces of metal may distort. And also don't forget this is a small steam engine so you do not need to torque up the nuts and bolts. When I held the expansion link in the correct position in the fork at the top of the eccentric rod, I was really pleased to see that the expansion link was exactly in the centre of the two gunmetal brackets mounted to the engine. If you're fitting Stevenson's link valve gear to an engine yourself and the expansion link does not sit midway in this bracket, you will need to fix this problem before continuing. But happily, the expansion link fits perfectly between the brackets as I've just shown in the previous clip. So now with renewed enthusiasm, I'm cleaning up the other eccentric strap and the other eccentric rod. And once again, making sure that the rod is the right way round, I'm bolting it to the eccentric strap using a pair of 4BA bolts. And once again, just like I did with the first one, I'm using the specially made long nuts and bolts to hold the second eccentric strap together. In this clip you can clearly see that both of the eccentric rods line up perfectly with the expansion link. So I'm going to move on and assemble the parts that pull the expansion link from left to right. Do not ever just use nuts and bolts for holding parts like these together that move, because they will wear rapidly, the threads will not be a good bearing surface. I know it's tempting and very quick, but it's not the way to do it and you will regret it later. I'm using a pair of 2BA studs that I had in my box of 2BA studs. And both of them are exactly the right length. The next part of the job is to remove the steam chest cover, which is now devoid of paint, and refit the slide valve and the valve rod. But before that, I need to refit the gunmetal gland fitting. I'm using some Loctite 542 on the thread, because previously there was a leak around the fitting where it went into the steam chest. But thanks to the Loctite 542, this will never leak again. This part is a modification from the drawing. It should be a hexagon fitting like the top part. But it doesn't really matter, I can get enough pressure on it using a screwdriver to lock it in place. As I mentioned in the first episode, I'm reusing the graphited yarn that was originally in there because it's fine, nothing wrong with it at all. To be honest though, my main reason for not wishing to discard the original piece of graphited yarn is that modern graphited yarn is nowhere near as good as the old stuff. Once this is fitted back in place, it will seal the valve spindle perfectly. And it will seal it for a long time to come. The time to change valve packings is when the valve packings feel really hard to the touch. Because the valve rod is threaded part of the way, I'm not tightening the gland nut, it's on there very loose because the next part of the job is to rotate the valve spindle, thread it first of all onto one nut, put the washer on, put the slide valve in place, another washer and another nut. To start with, I've positioned the slide valve midway on the threaded part of the valve spindle. 
What I'm doing here is temporarily holding the expansion link in place using a pair of 4BA brass bolts. I've also fitted the die block in place and as you can see the expansion link moves very smoothly across the die block. Before I can set the initial position of the slide valve I need to make sure that these two points are aligned. So as I rotate the engine to move the slide valve up and down I'm having to hold the valve spindle and the eccentric rod in line with my hand. The slide valve in the steam chest needs to alternately uncover and cover the ports just before the crank pin goes over top dead centre at both ends. And this is where it gets very tedious. When I make eccentric sheaves for steam engines, I don't do it like this, I make them individually so they're individually adjustable. Both of these eccentric sheaves have been machined as one unit and they're held in place with a very small grub screw. And to make it worse, the grub screw isn't in the middle. Because normally what I would do is fit the grub screw in the middle of the eccentric sheave, drill a hole in the bottom of the eccentric strap, and that way, every time I want to adjust the position of the eccentric sheave on the crankshaft, I just put the Allen key through the hole in the eccentric strap into the grub screw, and I don't have to remove everything like I'm going to have to do with this engine. So eventually, on the third attempt, I get it so that the eccentric sheave is in the correct position, so that the slide valve works in one direction perfectly. And in an ideal world, that should be the same for the other side, but I'll find out in due course whether it is or not. Before I can adjust the valve precisely, I need to assemble the valve gear, and I'll be doing that in the next episode. So that's it for now, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.